Sometimes you just got to run into trees. What's up, friends? My name is Aaron Ziotti. Everybody calls me Ziotti. Well, I just, there was a tree and I just ran right into it. That's from uh, a long time ago. That's from 2020. Hold on. That is from 2019. March 4th. Back when I lived in uh, Charleston. I love that spot. That, that That's one of my favorite spots in the world. In the world. Uh... These lights got reset, and they are nowhere near bright enough. We're getting there. That's about it. Kick that one down a little bit, and then we're going to bring this one up a little bit. That's better. What's up, buddies? Welcome to the show. Wow. We're going to be testing some... Um, analog cameras tonight. I get a lot of questions about which analog color color camera is best. Um, and I've tested them before and my answer is uh, Runcam Nano 3. Big part of the reason is that um, it fits in this amazing uh, Mobula 6 canopy. Um, and it's durable and it's lightweight and yeah, it's the camera is good enough. But 
for folks that are not looking to run that canopy, um, there are loads of cameras that are out there. Uh, for Christmas, I found on Amazon, put it on my wish list, um, the LDARC 199C, uh, which is this camera talked about in hush whispers, not really. Um, but yeah, it's a camera that some people say is like the best one ever. Uh, so yeah, I now have one. I also have a brand new, uh, Caddx Ant, uh, which is the four by three version. Um, so we might as well test that. I, I, I have run Caddx Ants before and lots of people say that they're the best. They've been kind of the worst for me. So this will be a super interesting little test of the Caddx Ant and, and comparing it directly comparing it to a couple other uh, cameras to hopefully show that it's the worst and I'm not crazy. Uh, Runcam Nano 3, of course, that's going to be like our control. You know, most of the rigs that I fly, the analog rigs that I fly are on that camera. So you guys have seen it a million times, but um, you always got to have a control. Um, and then we're going to take a look at the Newbie Drone BI, uh, which is very wide angle and very high contrast. Uh, I like it too. I like that camera a lot. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't fit in the canopy that I really like the best. Uh, so yeah, I do have this other little tiny guy. And I don't know what this is. Um, I, I was going to include this in the testing, but... A, I don't know what it is, and B, um, they've got a big chunk of um, liquid electric tape over uh, where the wires go in, um, and I was just being lazy, <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't want to pick it off, but now I just went ahead and picked it off, so uh, I don't know. I don't think we'll test this tonight, though, because I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, uh, here's what it looks like. If anybody specifically knows what this is, please let me know. It's very small. It's way smaller. Um, it might be one of the tiny whoop cameras. Might not, but it might be. Uh, here's what the back of it looks like, which is kind of the only way to tell with this because there's no silk screening on it whatsoever all right hold on hold on i gotta put this on a gray background being on the white background it's just overexposing the shit out of it there we go so that's what the back looks like um i have a funny feeling this might be one of the new tiny whoop pinch cams um but like i said i don't know i i can't figure out what this what this one is uh, so if you have a camera that looks exactly like this and you know what it is, please do let me know. Here's what it looks like on the front. I mean, there's nothing to see around the sides. It's just black plastic around the sides. Um, but yeah, look at the, like, you can tell how small the body of the camera is by looking at how big the lens is, right? Like the lens is bigger than the body of the camera. Um, we got somebody in the chat saying that it's the tiny pinch for sure. Um... Yeah, I had a funny feeling that's what this was. But there is a little capacitor on the front if this goddamn Logitech would focus. Of course, as soon as I say that. Uh, yeah, there's a little capacitor up in the top corner there. Um, so yeah, if anybody can confirm that that's the tiny whoop pinch, let me know. Uh, we're not going to get it in the testing tonight because I don't have a... Um, there's no plug on it. If, if, if I run out of things to do... I'll solder up a, uh, a plug to it, and we will test it, I guess. Although, I don't know. is, is There might not be a... Um, uh, there might not be a McStinky mount for this. Let me see. The, there is a small McStinky mount. Uh, I wonder if... All right, never mind. It fits in the small... It fits perfectly in the small McStinky mount. The first... Well, I'm not going to say it fits perfectly. It does fit. There's a little bit of a gap on the side there. Um, but, yeah, it does fit in this McStinky mount. Uh, is that the small McStinky? I think it is. 
No, it might be the. Well, yeah, it is a small because this is the, this is the uh, the bigger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So yeah, it fits in the smaller McStinky mount, uh, which is great. So we'll just put this one, just put this one on the side. You know what I mean? Uh, the Cadex Ant camera fits in the full size McStinky, I believe. Let me take a look. Oh, it's that one. This is the this is the big McStink. This is the big stinker here, and yeah. Um. Oh man, that is a bit of a stretch to get that in there, but it will. Yeah, it'll, there it goes. Um, so yeah, we've got mounts for all of these. The, the McStinky mount, for anybody that's not familiar with it, um, is available over on Thingiverse. And um, it's just a very simple, really solid camera mount that a lot of racers run. I think um, it might have been designed by T-Dog, one of the top racers, or maybe he just runs it. Um, but yeah, super simple little mount. Um, nothing nothing crazy uh one of the issues that we're going to run into though is the ufl plug on this happy model um uh on the happy model aio uh is up front and and so any of these three post mounts here the the front of the mount kicks up a little bit it just gives a little bit more up tilt which i don't love but i mean it's it's not the end of the world and then uh this is the 199 here and i believe it goes in it fits in the regular sized mcstinky as well right let's see uh, so this is the small mcstinky and yeah it's way too so the 199 camera is wider than it is tall um which is kind of interesting the the height would fit in this smaller stank a lot of puss uh but the height will not i'm sorry the width will not but if i put it in the big oh shit that's a problem well technically it fits in the big mcstinky mount but it is loose in there um i wonder if there's any way to get it to fit in the smaller mcstinky mount like you know the, these are printed out of teep nope 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 absolutely no way absolutely no way I was about to say these are TPU, so they will stretch, but no, I mean that's gonna be it's like, yeah, no, that ain't that ain't gonna work. So the 199 is like I don't know what mount you're gonna run for the 199. There are tons of tiny whoop camera mounts. Um, there might even be a 199 mount on Thingiverse. Um, ah, you know what? You could put it in this big McStinky mount and then just put uh, two little dots of E6000 on the top and the bottom and it would hold it in here totally fine. This this is fine. This is actually fine. Um, it get the These mounts kind of grip onto the lens and, and they hold the lens really nicely and that's what's going on in this, uh, in this case here. I would not fly this like hard freestyle like this. Although, even if the damn thing slides out, it's not really going anywhere because this is braced up against the, the AIO. Um, so it would probably be completely fine, to be honest. Um, so yeah, we're gonna test some uh, some cameras here tonight. Of course, this is a QA and a live stream. Um, this is also a Monday night live stream. And uh, we've got, what is this? Hey, this is a whole big bag of the newbie drone JST 1.25 plugs. That's very cool. Yesterday, I thought I was using the last three that I had. Um, but instead, I've got an entire bag of them. That's awesome. Um, so if you need JST 1.0, I meant to say 1.0, or the bigger industry standard JST 1.25 uh, plugs, I have loads of them. I have loads of both. So um, shoot me a message. CIDFPV.com has all my contact info and yeah, I'll send you out some for the price of shipping, which is like four or five bucks. Um, what's up everybody in the chat. Kevin Sumner was first. Brandon Woodford was next. Brad Monden, Frank Nicholas, Brandon Woodford again. Uh, free Lojo, Skyotic, Stephen Woodruff, FP Avery, uh, Feigning Goat, Hockey Rounds, Matt Norton, FP Avery, 
Bob Bruce, Douglas Otwell, Matt Norton, OCDFPV, Danzel the Terrible, CMYKFPV, uh, Northern Tier, Unluckiest Number, J Spin, FP Avery again, Denzel the Terrible again, uh, Winder, Sour Sham, Sour Sham. What is, there's a there's a story behind that that uh, YouTube name. Bob Bruce, Adam Weston, uh, Angel Cruz. We got Walter. My dad's here. What's up, Dad? Uh, Giddy Gim. That's a cool one. Giddy Gimbles. That's a great name. Uh, six six one FPV. CMYK again. Kevin Sumner again. Safe Zone FPV. Drones in FPV. Winder again. Uh, Pequeno Frijole is here. Uh, FPV Graybush as well. JP Spin. I think I said J Spin earlier. Scott FPV. Uh, Fun Per Volt. Super Deluxe. What's up, brother? How are you? Hope all is well. I might have gotten everybody. I don't see anybody else. What's up, friends? Uh, thanks for coming. Let's do FPV things. What do you say? What? Man, I did not... How do, I had a whole thing of camera plugs. It's, I have this one little box of um, stuff that I put right next to the desk here to try to remember to uh, offer up to you guys. It's like extra stuff that I've bought um, that, uh, yeah, sometimes when I do an order, I'll see something that I think maybe, like, you guys will want, um, and so I'll snag it, and then I put it in this little box, and then I forget to tell you guys about it. <laughs> like, I'll tell you guys about it once, and then I'll forget after that. Um, but yeah, there's nothing mind-blowing in there. Uh, speaking of things, uh, I have a set of these, uh, Rotori Hype Train Dime 1002 24,000 kV motors for sale. Uh, you have to solder them to the AIO, I didn't realize that. Uh, and then for any of you doing Underground Whoop League, which uses a spec motor, which is a 0802 19,000 kV, um, I have two sets of the Happy Model EX, the lightweight 802 19,000. So, if you're gonna get on get in on Underground Whoop League, uh, I've got a couple of sets of motors for you. I'll sell them to you cheap. Uh, hey, from the uh, from the 12 hours of New Year's giveaways, I've got a couple people whose um, addresses that I don't have. Um, Riot Nine, I, I I do have your address, but what what are we doing? Am I sending you Danzilla's stuff and then you're sending it to him, or am I sending your stuff to Danzilla and then he's sending it to you? Let me know. Uh, I think you might have already let me know. There might already be a message waiting for me in Discord. I think there is. Um, FPV Flyer, I need your address. FPV Flyer, please message me somewhere with your address. Um, and then... Bryce Miller. Bryce Miller, I need your address as well. Um, if you know those guys or you know how to get in touch with those guys, do me a favor, shoot them a message, um, and say, Yo, see how I need your address. And, uh, yeah, I'll send you out your stuff. Tonight is also a, uh, a quick little giveaway night. Uh, courtesy of Frank Nicholas, we have a ton of extra large t-shirts. Um, and so every single Monday night, I'm going to be doing a quick little giveaway uh, for a t-shirt every Monday night. Tonight's shirt is this very cool spooky Halloween shirt from FPV Crate um, with a uh, big old quad carrying... What's it carrying? A witch? Yeah, witch riding a quad. Um, so yeah, this is the shirt for tonight. We'll do the giveaway at around 11 o'clock like we always do. Cool. Get you some FPV shirt. Re resupply on FPV shirts. Um, apparently Whooptopia was wild today. I didn't get to I, I didn't get to see it, but it's awesome. Um, and I love it. Uh, FPV Graybush says I'll take the 802s. Awesome. Shoot me a message somewhere and uh, they're all yours, brother. Uh, I have one set with connectors. I have another set. Uh, it's actually a set of five. Uh, two of them have connectors, and then the other three are set up for direct solder. So you pick whichever set you want, or all of them for all I care. Uh, is that all we're doing tonight? That's what we're doing tonight. 
Comparing cameras, oh yeah, six batteries a day. And this is a Q&A live stream, of course. Uh, today is Monday, January 15th. Uh, what's up, friends? What's new? What's happening? What are you guys up to? Let me, uh, hey, if you want to talk directly to me in the chat, all you got to do is type CIDFPV. I'm going to get caught up right now. If you do it, it'll light up like that. If you spell it wrong, it won't light up, and I won't know you're talking to me. Or if you forget the FPV, can't just type CID, unfortunately. This is my full-time job. If you like what I'm doing here and you'd like to see it continue, I'm completely crowdfunded. Uh, this way, there's no company that's uh, sending me stuff and making me feel bad talking shit about their products. Um, if if I get a hold of something that sucks, I'm going to tell you it sucks, and I hope that you don't buy it either. Uh, here's my streaming schedule, a link to YouTube. This is CIDFPV.com. Uh, Patreon, as it says, definitely helps me the most. Over on Etsy, I've got some really fun stickers and hardware you can buy. Teespring, I've got shirts like this one that you can buy, the old school logo. Show that you're an OG. Uh, over on Fiverr, you can work directly with me. I'll help you fly better, tune better, build better. Stop buying ESCs to catch on fire, friends. I can help you for less than the cost of another flaming ESC. Um, I can help you buy the right ones and set them up so that they don't do that. Uh, PayPal, if you want to support me directly, you don't want to do a super chat because they take 30%. And then a whole bunch of affiliate links. Uh, at this point, if you're ever doing an order on the internet, somebody's got an affiliate link to that website. See if you can find it real quick before you check it out. I have affiliate links to Weebleed, Newbie Drone, FPV Cycle, Amazon, Get FPV, Oh My God, Brain 3D, HD Zero, Fly Wooey, Max Banggood, Camera Butter, and AliExpress. So all you got to do is hit an affiliate link at any point before you check out and that person's uh, whose affiliate link it is will get 1% to 6% of your entire order. Uh, it doesn't affect you using coupon codes or getting free shipping or anything like that. So there's kind of no reason not to do it. Use someone's affiliate links, even if you don't use mine. Uh, everybody has them. Everybody that's creating, everybody that's doing this full time um, has a bunch of affiliate links. So hook us up and uh, we'll keep making stuff for you to watch for free if you do. Uh, a couple of quick shout outs over in what there it is my email was just not opening for no real reason um we've got why is this oh okay because it's filtered on got it uh i know how to computer i swear where where is it here we go. AJ Farah, thanks for hopping onto the Patreon, man. Welcome to the Gangly Gang. Much appreciated. Uh, got a little bit of uh, Darius Sasson. Thank you for your support, my man. Welcome to the Gangly Gang. And we've got a little bit of... I usually have these in better order, but I kind of uh, forgot here at the last second to do that. Um... I apologize in advance. I'm probably going to ruin this, but Yaroshevsky. That's that's wrong. That might not be that wrong. Yaroshevsky, thank you so much for the support, man. Welcome to the gangliest of gangs. And I left a bunch of stuff in my shopping cart, of course. Uh... There were a couple more. Uh, FPV Graybush, thank you for joining the Patreon, man. Welcome to the gangliest of all the gangs. Uh, Mark is on red. Here we go. And uh, Donald Nielsen, welcome to the gang, man. Thank you for the support. Very, very cool of you. Um, and Michael Kajas sent me an email uh, reminding me that there is an OSD element for motor RPM. Um, so we can take a look at our, uh, motor RPM while I'm holding a tiny whoop and then in the air, I'm probably going to have to fly it upstairs to give it enough room vertically to wind the motors all the way up. Um, but we can kind of hopefully maybe see the difference in RPM in a thrust stand setting where the motor is, is, um, you know, mounted and not moving anywhere versus a motor that's railing through the sky. Um, so that'll be pretty cool. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to that. I remember when when uh, RPM filtering first came out. I remember seeing that in the um, uh, in the OSD elements. But then uh, back you know back then I didn't really know how to use it. So it was, and I completely forgot about it. So hell yeah. Um, 
Oh yeah, and then uh, uh, Fly Tribe, Fly Tribe Magazine actually joined the Patreon. Thank you guys. If you're if you're not subscribed to Fly Tribe, you're missing out, man. Uh, amazing, amazing, amazing um, magazine, like FPV Magazine. Come on, get something on your uh, on your coffee table that'll make you feel official. Do it. Uh, it's really well done, and you know, supporting people that are doing that, writing articles, um, taking photography, still photography of FPV, like that's awesome. That's something that we need to support. So, um, yeah, check it out. You're going to dig it. Steven Woodruff tagged me and said, did you watch Whoops Whooptopia? We talked about that a second ago. Uh, Brad Monden says, I got a tiny lifter question. Fire away, my man. Uh, just make sure you tag me. Steven Woodruff says, ooh, colors. <laughs> CMYK says, uh, Whooptopia was wild. For sure going uh, to more races and build some race-specific whoops. Very cool. Uh, Kevin Sumner says, ant or ant light? Uh, ant light. Cadex ant light. I just threw away the thing, but yeah, it's the ant light no mounting screw holes on the sides or anything like that uh cmyk says pinch i think so uh so it looks like here's uh, where i showed it drones in says pinch winder says cyclops maybe drones in says yes pinch i'm holding one in my hand right now that's exactly what i was looking for thank you dude um uh pequeno frijole says that's the pinch uh tiny whoop pinch cam for sure uh uh, ah, nice. My dad is uh, flying kites on the beach in Florida. My parents figured it all out, man. They got it. <laughs> they got it going on. Drones and says, uh, "I'm holding the, holding the same one in my hand." Pinch. All right, great, 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 great. So uh, FPV Graybush says pinch or CO3. What's the CO3? Is that the Beta FPV camera? Uh, CMYK says the racers are running a new mount from what I've seen recently looking to print some this week if I get TPU running well that's pretty cool um, uh, racing mounts aren't are probably gonna have tons of up tilt which is not gonna really be good for freestyle but I am interested to see what the mount looks like OCD FPV says I have a 3d printed mount that will fit the entire Cadex ant light into the Mobula 6 canopy if you want the file really that's super interesting um, I don't like, thus far, I mean, we're going to try this one tonight, but so far, every single Caddx Ant that I've run, I've kind of hated. Um, so hold off for now, for sure. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's more of an outdoor camera or what, but like, um, it's been one of my least favorite cameras so far. Maybe this one will be better, um, but yeah, it, I, I've, I've not, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just, they just don't look good to me. Uh, but we'll try another one. Uh, FPV Graybush says, I'll take the 802s. We got that. Demo FPV says, what's up? Uh, Steven Woodruff says, is it normal for AliExpress to take 10 days to ship? I, I mean, if it were me ordering from AliExpress, I would be happy if they shipped it all. I've heard people get stuff from them, but that website just scares me. I've never ordered from it, so... Um, yeah, I have no idea. CMYK, uh, dropping the CIDFPV.com link. Thank you, dude. Not applicable said, uh, someone asked yesterday, you can connect to the Happy Model flight controller without USB through UART1 on the bottom of the board via an FTDI adapter. Must have MSB dis enabled on the port, though. Jesus. Um, that is an awful lot of work. Uh, uh, I'm going to call you NA from now on. Um, thank you for letting me know. I, I did not know that. I, I, when, yeah, when, like, in this hobby, our, our stuff is pretty inexpensive, all things considered. Um, I have backgrounds in a lot of legitimately expensive hobbies, uh, motorsport being the absolute worst, um, but also still photography, videography, um, music doesn't have to be expensive, but it can be, um, airsoft doesn't have to be expensive, but it certainly can be. And I certainly made it expensive. It, it paid for itself cause I was running a shop. Um, but yeah, it was still expensive. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like for, for components that are like 50 bucks or less, um, if it's going to take me more than an hour, I'm just kind of like, you know what, just throw it away. <laughs> And just get a new one. I, I know that's kind of wasteful, but um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it that I love that that's a possibility, but I mean, you're soldering to the. I think you are one on the bottom of the happy model board is one of the is one of those absolutely 
tiny little round pads, which is just like a nightmare to solder to. And then you've got the FTDI adapter and like, you know, that that's going to be a hell of a, and then like, you know, you get hooked up to it and then you make changes. And then next time you want to make any changes, you got to do that whole thing again. It's like, yeah, this is, this is a bit much. Um, but, I love that that there is a way. That's that's phenomenal. Brad Monden says my question is about flight controller. Uh, no way I'm paying 100 bucks for the BLV4 and the three is gone. What's the alternative one? The 2S flight controller. Um, I was thinking about the X12. I was planning to buy a Mobula 7 anyway. Not sure uh, if production is 2S capable. Um, yeah, so definitely don't get the BLV4 because it doesn't work on 2S. It doesn't work right on 2S. Um, there were some BLV threes on Newbie Drones website, but you had to buy like a toothpick in order to get them, which was kind of a nightmare. Um, I have a bunch of the BLV threes. I have like three or four of them. Um, I got them when I was doing the tiny lifters. I wanted to have extras. Um, and so I haven't had to look for another AIO. Uh, 2S is really hard on these AIOs. Um, I know the X12 says that it does 2X, but I I just I don't know I don't I don't know about that. Um, I would love if it would work. They are 12 amp FETs, which is great. Um, anybody out there have let's say a hundred plus batteries through an X12 on T on, on 2S by chance? Um, X12 would be my guess. Th that would be my guess as to which. AIO to get um, the only problem with that I mean the not problem but the the waste is that there's a VTX on board and that um, oh wait no no we said tiny lifter not walk snail tiny lifter um, yeah so that that would be where I would maybe go um, the oh th that right that's the issue with the X12 the, the issue with the X12 is what the hell frame do you put it in it won't fit in the cockroach 75 frame um, it will fit, uh, and the Cockroach 75 frame has a carbon fiber brace, which when I was doing the tiny lifter builds, um, that was a necessity. I tried, uh, the Mobula 7 V4 frame, uh, which is where the X12 does fit and it was too wobbly and too floppy. Um, I think I tried another 75 millimeter frame and it was the same deal with no carbon fiber brace. It's just too floppy. So yeah, that, that's kind of the problem um there's a chance that the newer motors that was back in the days of um only running the, the only motors that i had to run were the beta fpv 1102s after all of the tiny lifter testing i learned that those beta fpv 1102 motors used a very soft metal for the motor shaft and most of my motor shafts were bent on those um, which could have been the reason that doing those builds in a frame without a carbon fiber brace would not work. So I wonder if the much better balanced and much stronger RC and power 1002s would work um, on basically what you would buy is a Mobula 7 1S ELRS um, and then hook up a different battery lead for 2S um, figure out a way to hold the the camera that you're looking to put up in the air and swap the motors and that's about it uh so that would be great um but i just don't know i've never run 2s on the x12 mainly because it scares me <laughs> uh maybe someone out there has bob bruce has only run his x12 on 1s um i mean it says that it says that it's 1s 2s c compatible but you know Sometimes I say that I can jump over the roof. God damn it. Can't do that. So what an awful, awful, awful metaphor. It's not even a metaphor, is it? Uh, Denzel the Terrible with the best idea of the live stream. He says, right pinch on it with your fancy metallic Sharpie. Um, it's so small, it's going to be hard to do that. But... And I mean, it is so it, it is so small. And it, 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 what my first inclination was, I think this is the pinch cam. Um, can I get like a P on there? Can can do I can I maybe get a P? 
Nope. Well, maybe. Nope, that just looks like a upside down L. Upside down L. Um there's 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 just nowhere to write it on there. I don't know. Now it's got red Sharpie on it. Maybe maybe red Sharpie is synonymous with pinch. I don't know. Red R P Q R. I don't know. We're not testing it tonight anyway, because there's no camera plug on it. Um Brad Monden said no, we got that. Um, so yeah, Brad, I, I I wish I had a better answer for you. Uh, does anybody know of a good Tiny Whoop 2S AIO? Nobody will. Uh, it's got to have the VTX hit. So the the problem you're going to run into, Brad, is there are a bunch of 1S AIOs that have VTXs and receivers and whatnot built in. Um, it's tough to find a 2S AIO that has a receiver and a VTX built in. Um, and I mean, with a tiny lifter, technically it's making enough thrust where it's not that important to have everything on one board. You could absolutely run an external VTX or even an external receiver um, and be totally fine. But then you've got like, it's just with, with the tiny lifter, the, the key is to keep it as simple as possible because You've got to hang this massive Insta360 Go uh, or Go 2 off the damn thing. Um, so, yeah, having everything be on the one board really does help. But technically speaking, yeah, you, you could, if you can handle the packaging and find a spot for it, um, there are a bunch of 2S AIOs that either don't have, most of them don't have VTXs. Some of them don't have VTXs or receivers. Don't do that. that that's too much. It's, it's going to be wires everywhere. It's You're going to have a hard time finding a place for both of those boards and the FPV camera and the HD camera. That that's just, that's got like nightmare written all over. So I would not recommend that. Um, but yeah, maybe somebody knows a good to us. AIO, uh, unlucky, man, I'm exhausted today. Busy day running around. Uh, unluckiest number says, do you want to sell any high KV 702s? Not really. I, I, I run motors into the ground, so you wouldn't want any of the motors that I've got anyway. Um, they just get their their asses kicked. OCD FPV says uh, the low light transition is really good. Uh, what are we talking about here? OCD FPV. Uh, tag me again and tell me. Say the low light transition is really good on such and such camera. I'm assuming you're talking to a camera. Talking about a camera. Uh, Skyatic FPV says I picked up a Meteor 65 Pro for my first Tiny Whoop. Uh, is the CO3 ca camera considered bad? Not at all. Uh, the rest of the rig, on the other hand, uh, the CO3 camera is probably the best part about that rig. Um, and it's not that bad. L like, you're fine. Um, the, I think the, the weakest part of the beta FPV uh, quads are the external VTXs. The fact that it is an external VTX is super frustrating. It, it, it's way better to have that on the AIO. Um, just from like a packaging and weight standpoint, Certainly not from like a, a repairability or reliability standpoint, but yeah, the CO3 camera is, is actually considered to be one of the best. Um, yeah, as your first tiny whoop, there's nothing wrong with that rig. Your, your first tiny whoop is not going to be your forever tiny whoop. Um, it's going to be to get you in the air, to, to get you some experience. Um, down the road, what you're really going to want is a Mobula 6 ELRS. Um, and then you swap a, a, a higher KV set of motors on it, you put it on BT 2.0, and you've got pretty much like the best Tiny Whoop builds um, that exists, really. Um, there's a couple other things you can do, like swapping the frame, putting a True RC Singularity antenna on it. But um, yeah, the, the Mobula 6 ELRS is amazing. Um, your upgrade path should be BT 2.0 first, then motors, maybe do those at the same time, and then swap the frame out. Uh, the frame, my favorite frame at the moment is the Newbie Drone Cockroach V3. Uh, in a close second is the Weebleed FPV Crown frame. And then the old school uh, Beta FPV regular Meteor, not the Meteor Pro frame, um, is a good choice as well. Definitely stay away from the Meteor 65 Air frame. It is way too fragile. They just fall right apart. Um, and you you have to like cripple your PID tune. Maggie, go out. Uh, you have to like cripple your PID tune. Oh, she went out to the grocery store, didn't she? 
Because there's no... No. Why would she have gone out to the grocery store? That's weird. Um, so, yeah. There you go. Uh, beat the crap out of that tiny whoop. And then you'll have an excuse to build what we call around here the ultimate freestyle tiny whoop. The, the performance of this thing is just bananas. Uh, Brad Bonden says, I want to use a Nano 3 on the tiny lifter. How do I make it happen? Uh, I've posted three Thingiverse links in Discord 3D printing. Will any of those work? Remember, my cam is uh, 12 grams, so I can afford to use a slightly heavier, heavier canopy, I think. Um, the Nano 3 is a very specific camera that if the mount doesn't specifically say it's for a run cam Nano 3, it ain't going to work. Um, there is no other camera that is the same shape as the run cam Nano 3. So, yeah, that's going to be tough. Uh, that's going to be tough to, um, to find a canopy that works. Did you run out, Maggie? Did you run out? What happened? Oh. No, here. Why? No, he's fine. Why'd you go? You, you getting groceries? What you doing? Yeah. We're gonna do it tomorrow. I had to run out. Okay. You're the best. You're magic. Yeah. She I got mean, something special for Azalea. You know, there's a few things that we just needed, and I wanted a bubble bath, and I, you know. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. There it is. You don't want me to let Teddy out? Uh, no, because I want to fly up there. Come here, you little fart bag. Come here, you little German. Get over here. Get over here. Bring your baseball bat over. Your baseball bat. Come here. Come on. Look, at he's he's looking between Maggie and me, deciding who he loves more. He hears you on my phone, and I'm a few seconds behind you, and so he's like hearing your voice with me, and then he's Come here. Come here. All right, I'll go upstairs. He's going to follow you. Let's see who he loves more. And there it is. No Teddy for us. <laughs> um, OCDFVV says, a low light transition is really good on the ant light. Ah, gotcha. Definitely a grainy, grainy image, uh, but do, but we do a lot of black light flying and dark LED gate bashing. Interesting. Very cool. Very, very cool. Uh... Yeah, Brad, you're going to have a hard time, man. You're going to have a hard time finding them out for the run cam nano three that can also hold any kind of um hd cam but fingerverse has an awful lot of mounts so I, it wouldn't surprise me if there was something there um i have not seen anything what you can also do is look for a mount that maybe like a, an hd whatever your hd cam is look for a like a mobula 6 hd cam mount that maybe uh integrates with the the mobula 6 canopy um, because the Mobula 6 canopy is set up to hold the uh, the Runcam Nano 3. Um, so, yeah. There you go. That's that's the best I can do, man. Sorry. Sorry I don't have a specific suggestion for you. If you find something, though, let us know. If if Because that's... That's interesting. That, that allows a Tiny Lifter build based on the Mobula 7 ELRS with not much modification um and that would be really really cool so yeah let us all know if, if you find something uh lights camera coffee that's a fun uh youtube name for sure uh says i wish i was following you when i bought a meteor 65 pro before i got last year um it was a good learning platform at least ultimate freestyle build here i come soon um yeah the the meteor 65 pro look you can do way worse than that um you can also do way better though. <laughs> like the the difference in flight performance of that thing versus the ultimate freestyle tiny whoop is, it's pretty nuts. But as someone that's new or for iGal where you're gonna just pound the balls out of it, like whatever, you know, you you were in the warm up circle swinging with the weight on the bat, and now eventually you've got your nice aluminum lightweight baseball bat that you can go hit a home run with. So. Yeah. No shame in buying. Look, we've all bought horrible, horrible, horrible quads before. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Welcome to the club of uh, um, of Stockholm Syndrome FPV pilots. 
Uh, all right, cool. We're caught up on chat. Let's uh, do some things. It's 1047. Let's do the t-shirt giveaway. What do you say? Uh, this is the t-shirt. It is an extra large. Thanks to Frank Nicholas for sending over a big old box of his old t-shirts. Congrats to Frank on, on losing weight so that he can fit into medium shirts now. Um, I see what Frank has done here. Frank has sent... He's sent away all of his big clothes so that he has to stay medium. He has no clothes left. I see. I see. As someone with an infinite metabolism, uh, that's just something that I'll never understand. Uh, but it, it's a, uh, having a crazy metabolism is certainly a good problem to have, but it's still a pain in the ass. Like having to eat every two hours um, and trying to like control cholesterol when you eat every two hours and stuff like that is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, so just ignore it and you'll be fine. Uh, so yeah, that's the shirt. Uh, you guys know what to do. Standard, uh, giveaway stuff. It's, um, four, let's do $4 a ticket because it's, it's a shirt and $4 is like what the shipping costs me. So four bucks a ticket. You can do a super chat here, or you can do a PayPal over on CIDFPV.com. Two minute timer. Ready? Go. Uh, here we go. I forgot to put this up. There we go. Two minutes. All right, cool. Uh, we're going to do our six batteries a day, but I think we're going to wait. Let's do, let's do the camera comparison first. Let's knock out this giveaway and then we'll do the, uh, we'll slog through the cameras, check those all out, and then we'll knock out our six batteries. And that almost certainly will, will be enough fun stuff for us. And then, yeah, no, that works because, um, if we've got too much time left, I'll put a, a camera plug on this guy and away we shall go. Uh, all right, cool. So where's it at here? There we go. Okay, good deal. Frank Nicholas says, uh, yep, 220 pounds. Wow, 220 to 150 to 160 for over a year now and healthier than ever at 56, going on 57. That's rad, man. That's amazing. Uh, let's do, since, since it's a little bit slow, let's do two shirts. Also, cause Frank sent a lot of shirts. Uh, this is extra large as well. And it's a Rotorite shirt. There you go. We'll do two shirts since it looks like nobody wants the Halloween shirt. It's kind of, you know, we're far away from Halloween. Um, Rotorite shirt, yo, with the cool Rotorite logo in the pocket. Extra large. Ready, go. You got two more minutes. Uh, this is an old school Rotorite shirt too. If if you're if you're new to the hobby, but you want that OG respect when you show up at the flying field, this is how you're gonna do it right here. This is it. Uh, I think I can fit two shirts in the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can fit two shirts in here. Uh, so there you go. F two shirts for four dollars. Four dollars per ticket. Uh, PayPal or super chat. Uh, unluckiest number says, how much does the stink weigh compared to the hummingbird? Stink. Uh, and does the Mobula 6 fit the hummingbird cam? Uh, definitely not. It definitely doesn't fit. The, the, the Mobula 6 canopy really only fits the, uh, run cam nano three unless you get some kind of a different fancy mount from Thingiverse. Um, so, yeah. And then, how much does the stink weigh compared to the hummingbird? What's the stink? What's the stink? Um, stink. McStinky? But then, you, when you say hummingbird, do you mean the hummingbird AIO? Or do you mean like the hummingbird bind and fly McStinky canopy. Yeah, that's kind of where I thought first, but why would we, why would we be comparing a canopy to the hummingbird either AIO or I have no idea. I have no idea what the, what the stink is. I'm sure it's a, it's a um, phone, 
Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, the McStinky canopy. All right, fair enough. Uh, oh, compared to the Hummingbird canopy, that's what you're asking, isn't it? Uh, so the Hummingbird canopy is called the um, uh, Nubie Drone Goober canopy. Goober is the name for it. Uh, McStinky mount is roughly... There are different sizes of the McStinky mount, so the weight could go up or down a little bit. This is kind of the middle size, um, and it's 0.8 of a gram, 0.81 of a gram. The Goober Canopy is at least 1.8 grams. Um, the Goober Canopy is a little bit heavy. Let me see if I have one. Uh, they might all be mounted up to, to builds. Uh, nope, I'm going to have one in here. Uh, the Goober Canopy, the Newbie Drain Goober Canopy is, uh, this is the purple one with no camera in it, 1.5, ah, I was wrong, 1.5 grams, uh, 1.5 grams with the internal piece that is needed to hold the camera and the two screws in it, uh, so, yeah, there you go, uh, oh man, I even have one of these, I forgot about this. This is the super rare camera. This is the OV-231. Um, this is actually really similar to the 199 from what I remember. Yeah, it is. It's a little bit wider. Uh, but I also remember testing this camera and it sucked. <laughs> so we're not going to put this camera in the test either. Um, I used to have a bunch of extra cameras, but... They're, they're just, most of them are not that great. Uh, and that, it's not, they're not that great. I mean, look, they're fucking backup cameras. Like, most of our analog cameras are just car backup cameras. Um, and so, to, to use them on FPV quads is wild. Like, it's crazy how decent they actually work. Every time that I back up in Maggie's, so Maggie's um, uh, has a... Maggie has a uh, Acura TSX Sport Wagon, um, and it's a 2014, I think. I think it's 2014, um, and that's back when the backup cameras were fairly, like, new and shitty. Um, and it's so like, and so every time I drive her car and go into reverse, it's so obviously one of the cameras that's sitting on this table. It's really funny. Um, so yeah, not out, not ac not. Not applicable. Um, with a ten dollars super chat, are you buying two tickets? Uh, let me know. Let me know. Uh, time. No more. Uh, no more t-shirt uh, uh, tickets are being sold as of right now. Here we go. Let's pull this window up, and then we're gonna go to reset. And Adam Wesson with a four dollars super chat. He says, T-shirt, congrats on losing the weight. Thank you for the support, Adam. Stephen Woodruff with an $8 super chat. He's getting two tickets. You can, uh, I forgot to mention, but most of you know, you can do multiples. Um, one and two. All right. I got Ian on my other screen looking at me uh, from Mads Tech. I, I, I'm halfway through his Caddx Moonlight uh, review. OCD FPV with a $4.99 super chat. Throw me an extra dollar. Thank you, brother. Uh, all right. Got that. And uh, not applicable. He says yes. All right. Cool. Not applicable uh, with a $9.99 super chat. He gets two tickets to the gun show. There it is, friends. And submit. And somebody going to win these two t-shirts. Who's it gonna be? It's not applicable. Not up. Jesus, why am I? It's NA. NA wins. Congratulations, brother. Uh, NA, do me a favor. Shoot me a. Uh, all right. If 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 you're on Patreon and your uh, Patreon address is correct, do me a favor and just confirm it real quick. If you're on there, uh, you're good to go. Also, if 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 I can go to Patreon and search for not applicable and find you then you're good to go. But do me a favor, check your address on there. Um, if not, uh, you need to get in touch with me. So go
Go to CIDFPV.com. There's 18 different ways you can get in touch with me on there. Uh, shoot me a message, fire me an email, whatever, and uh, give me your address. And if you want a tracking number, give me your email address, and I will send you these two shirts, my friend. I already got them all packaged up, as you can see, since you're not a blind person from what I know. I mean, you're an FPV, so I doubt that you're blind. Uh, let me just write your name on here. Not... Applicable. If I don't ship this soon, I'm going to read that and be like, what the hell? Why would you write not applicable on there? Why would you not write a person's name, you jackass? That's me talking to myself a month from now. Uh, congrats, brother. Thanks for, uh, for jumping in, fellas. CIDFPV, supporting gambling addiction since 2018. 2020. I don't know when I started streaming. Uh, let's do. What did we say? We're gonna we're gonna fly first. Now nah, let's do the camera testing first. We'll do the camera testing, and then we'll fly. So for the camera testing, I'm gonna use a little. Um, I'm gonna use like a, a, a. Here's a bunch of light, and then here's not much light comparison uh, between them and I've even got one of you beautiful bastards sent me uh, this come on get out of there uh, this really cool this is more of like a it's like a focusing chart but it's also uh, for color calibration um, and so I'm gonna put this over here which is fairly bright and then we'll plug the cameras in here, kind of pointing at that. And that should give us an idea. Uh, no, let's put it over here. I'm going to put it right below this lamp. And then uh, we're going to point the cameras at the dark ass purple and red room, which is a really challenging kind of lighting situation over on the other side. And yeah, you'll be able to kind of evaluate them from... Um, <laughs> 661 says moonlight release date. Let's test analog cameras. <laughs> yeah. That's how we do it, goddammit. We really keep our finger on the pulse of what's happening today in FPV around here. Uh look, I test the stuff that really matters, okay? And that's tiny whoops and analog cameras. So let's do it. Um, I can use this, I'm, I'm going to use this funny little AIO with canopy set up and I'm going to take the canopy right off of it, um, to show you guys some of these cameras. Um, if someone doesn't mind, if, if you want to do this type, I'm going to do it in the chat. Um, and the first person to type that, uh, gets to do it. If someone could, I would love it if you would, um, take screenshots of the live stream when I'm holding these things up uh, and then dump those into Discord so that we can just bang, 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 bang with the screenshots, open them up in different tabs and just tab between them. That'll be super helpful. Um, somebody always volunteers to do it. Uh, so yeah, thank you for that. Uh, what I need to do is put a little mark on the desk here uh, for this testing to make sure that I put the camera in the exact same spot every time. And so I'm going to do that with one of uh, CMYK's very cool stickers here because uh, it needs to, like, stay on the desk. So let's do it with this 6040-420 sticker here. 6040-420 volts eater, E-A-T-R. Uh, come on. Come off of there. Get there it is. All right, cool. So I'm going to put this sticker right about there. And so that's just going to give me like a spot to drop every single camera on. Um, and that way you can kind of get an idea of their field of view. Uh, and it's just sort of a, it's, it's fair to do it that way. It's the most fair to do it that way. I should say, uh, I'm going to need to charge another battery because I'm certainly going to kill at least one battery doing this. 
First up is the Runcam Nano V3. Uh, the camera that we all know and love. So we're gonna do the bright light test first here. Um, and then we're gonna come back and do the uh, other side of the room test. So here we go, first one. Oh, it's so funny, there's no motors hooked up to it. So it doesn't like beep or anything like that. Uh, okay, so let's put this down on the desk here. Uh, actually, no, let me also clean the lens. All right, because we are kind of evaluating the amount of detail that you get. Uh, I should maybe turn off my OSD, maybe. Uh, so, all right, the top of the frame is the top of the whiteboard. I wanna try to uh, equalize the up tilt. So top of the frame is always gonna have the top of the whiteboard here. That's perfect. Um, so there you go, there's the Runcam Nano 3. Now we're going to pull this and hold on. Let me pull all these grommets off here before I lose the damn things. I already lost one of them. Uh, all right. So, well, let's get the OSD off of there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let's do this with a clean OSD. What do you think of that? Let's put this back in, and let's just do that one more time, real quick, like. Come on, connect the LRS, connect. And three, two, one. All right, cool, no SD. And all right, there it is lined up. Try to get that in the center. And then we've got whiteboard intersecting with the very top. All right, so there you go, Runcam Nano 3. Next up, we've got, right, I guess I can turn the transmitter off now. So that was run cam nano three. Uh, next up, we've got the is this the one twenty two. This is the hold on. I'm gonna look really close. I want to make sure I get this right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the uh, the uh, sorry, not one twenty two. This is the LDARC one ninety nine C like Charlie version two point one. Uh, this is available on Amazon. If you search for LDARC camera, you'll find it. And hopefully it uses the same plug. Hopefully I installed the right plug. I did not. Did I not? No, I did, I did, I did, let me go. All right, there's that. And we're gonna plug this in. And we're gonna put this right here. Line it up. Fucking fuck. Hold on. Let's flip it upside down and I'm gonna wipe the lens off. All right, so the, just in case you were wondering, on this camera, the, uh, the wires come out of the bottom of the camera. Usually the wires come out the top. Uh, but on this one, the wires come out the bottom. Let me clean the lens real quick. And LDARC, 199C camera, coming up. All right, there it is. And let's put it on the little sticker here. Wow, that is way, way, way wider field of view, Jesus. Um, so there you go. There's the LDARC. Uh, let's try to even up the fields of view. Jesus. Okay, this is, this is nuts. Um, wow, the field of view, dude. I have this thing like a foot closer to be able to try to even up the field of view. That's that's as, as good as I can do. But realistically, this is the screenshot that I want here um, because field of view makes a huge difference. And this is just absurd field of view. I wonder why I've got these. Oh, it's this lamp. I bet you this lamp is creating that yeah these leds strobe and so the the power level of this led is strobing and it interfering a little bit with the um with the uh uh the way that cameras work the way that cameras 
cycle from top to bottom. All right, so there's the LDARC. That is too wide of a field of view. That is way too wide of a field of view. Maybe for like a toothpick or something like that, you're going to fly outside, but um, for a tiny whoop, that's going to be rough. Next up is the Newbie Drone BI. Uh, this is a wide field of view camera, but nothing like what we just saw. You'll see what I mean in a second. Getting this guy plugged in. And... Why am I having such a hard time plugging these in? Because I'm plugging it in upside down. Hey, look at that. And does that work way better? All right, there's this guy. And let's wipe it off. Also got to push it a little bit forward in the mount. It's sitting a little bit back too far in this mount. It's got like a short, this camera has kind of a short snout on it. There we go. And there it is in the exact same position. Wow, this is really wide field of view too. Moving it forward to try to get it to the point where it's roughly the same. Look how good this camera looks though. Always impressed by this newbie drone BI. Uh, but back in the spot, that's what it looks like. All right. That's the newbie drone BI. And then we've got last but not least the Cadex Ant Light. This is what I'm most curious about. Um, and it's got the wrong plug. Son of a bitch. Yeah, no, that's the wrong plug. Damn it. Uh, farts. At some point, I must have made an adapter plug for this. Hang on, hang on, maybe not, but maybe. Oh, shit sticks. Uh, well, don't I have a quad with this on it? I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Here's a Cadex Ant light. Uh, this is on the, yeah, this is on the, the little analog cinematic drift car chasing rig. Um, why the hell did I buy another one? That was stupid. So technically speaking, this is running through a different um, AIO. This is the T-Motor AIO, but it should be roughly the same. Oh, uh, you know what? The other problem here is that I have adjusted the settings on this camera. So this is no longer stock settings, um, but like, look how bad it looks. Like, is it just me? It looks awful. Like, look how muddy this all is. But it's not, it's also not muddy. It's it's like over sharpened, but not. See how it like wiggles around like that? That's over sharpening. Um, if I get it closer. Yeah, look how, like, look at all that. Uh, it's called more, 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 M-O-I-R-E. Um, and it happens when you're, when it's over sharpening. I mean, I can hook the remote up to this and kind of fix that a little bit. Uh, but I don't know. Are we going Are we going that hard on it? Uh, Sixes one says, do we need the lamp in the shot? Uh, yeah, my thought process was that the lamp is very bright and I'm just kind of making it as difficult on these as possible. So I, I was kind of thinking of having the lamp in that one. Um, we're going to do it again, but we're going to point them uh, to the other side of the room, which will be very low, uh, uh, very low light. So we'll kind of test both. Let me really quickly hook up the, uh, the little remote to this guy. And in fairness, I did forget to clean the lens. So let's just really quickly. How the hell am I going to plug this in? The thing is. So short and small. These stupid little camera plugs. God damn it. That, get in there. Come on. How is this going to work? How did I plug this in the other time? Oh, there we go. Oh, that's no big deal. Uh, okay. So, let me see if I can get that sharpening under control. God, that looks bad. Okay, uh, hold the center button. Whoa, easy. Easy, big fella. 
Turn auto white balance. Video setting. Would it maybe be in there? HD standard. So bad the I can barely read this. What the hell? Sharpness. There we go. Sharpness is on auto. Well, let's get that out of here. All right. Manual sharpening is now turned on. Let's go all the way down. What I like to do is go all the way down and then max out. All the way down, max out. That'll that'll really show you what the adjustment is doing. So super over sharpened, kind of soft. Um, let's get it closer to the uh, to the thing here. And what, yeah, see, even with the sharpness all the way down, it still has that effect going on all over the damn place. Um, but let's push the sharpness up and you'll see it get way, way, way worse. And you'll see it start happening in more places on this uh, piece of paper. So let's start to bring it up until the point where it becomes like really, really bad. And then we'll back it off. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, see, so ten, it's really bad. Nine, eight, seven, six. Let's try six. I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, so at a six. Turn, save and exit. Um, I mean, that's a little bit better, but I don't know. I still just think it looks terrible. Is it just me? Is it just me? Maybe it's just me. It's probably just me. Uh, so there you go. There's a bunch of those cameras. Now, let me unplug this guy and let him cool off for a second. Uh, I can't believe that sharpening was on auto. Why did I have it set to auto? That's weird. Uh, now we're going to point these towards the dark side of the room and see how they do over there. And what I usually do is I'll just put them on top of the, of the little lamp here. So let me put the lamp in a good general position. And all right, we're going to start off again with the Runcam Nano 3. I just said wit. Wit the Runcam Nano 3. These other two guys, this is going to be our uh, Caddx light. Let me actually move this a little bit. Okay, so run cam nano three first battery. All right, so I'm going to set this up like that. And nope, that ain't it. Well, let's go right here, right in the middle of this black sticker and let's get it level. All right, so we've got the, the newbie drone gate up on top there. It's just barely showing the entire uh, bottom part of that gate there. And then there's a bunch of uh, white from this light on the bottom. All right, so there's that. Switch the camera. And the the Runcam Nano 3, the, the big thing about it is that it has way less field of view. Um, but I kind of think that these other cameras have way too much field of view. Um, what's interesting about field of view is it, it makes you look like you're going faster, which is kind of cool. Uh, this is the Newbie Drone BI. Hold on. Let me do these in the same order that I did them last time. Um which is not the Newbie Drone BI. Uh, next up, we're gonna go with the 199C camera. Is that this one? Yep, 199C, all right. So this is that second one that I was just blown away by the difference in field of view. But now that I've seen the BI, maybe I won't be as shocked by the field of view on this, let's see. Okay, put it right in the middle here and wow yeah look at that field of view i mean it's hard because like everything out there is so much farther away with it like this all right so there you go there's that one 199c and next up we've got the newbie drone bi okay 
Um, whoever is screenshotting these, can you put all of these in the uh, Tiny Whoop and Toothpick um, Discord channel? And then everybody else, feel free to go in there and say which one you think looks the best. It's it's pr Which camera looks the best tends to be a personal preference kind of thing. Look how good the Newbie Drew and BI looks, man. Look at that. Lots of contrast, but like lots of detail too. Really wide field of view though. Crazy wide field of view. All right, and then last but not least is the uh, Caddx Ant Light. I am going to wipe the lens off this time. Although the lens does not look dirty, so that would not have been a uh, a deal breaker. Should not have had any bearing on it. All right, Caddx Ant Light going through a different AIO, but same OSD chip and everything. Look how bad that looks, dude. Come on, it's not just me. That looks terrible. It looks awful. Look how fucking muddy it is. And I can't just crank the sharpness up because then it looks over sharpened. Looks bad, right? All right, there we go. Uh, there's all four cameras. I am still the biggest fan of the Runcam Nano. Uh, but I've got one Ultimate Freestyle Tiny Whoop with the Runcam Nano 3 on it. And I can very quickly piece together a second Ultimate Freestyle Tiny Whoop using the, the uh, AIO that I was just using. And I'm going to put the... What did you uh uh what did you guys think about the 199C versus the uh Newbie Drone BI? Could you guys really see a difference? I I kind of couldn't see a difference. I think the the BI looked a little bit better. Um so I think I'm going to put this together with the BI, but if you guys say 199, I'll do that instead. So type NBD or 199 in the chat with not even which one looks better. Wh which one do you guys want me to put on this Ultimate Freestyle Tiny Whoop here? Um, you tell me, and I will put it on there. I can't put the uh, I can't put the Caddx Light on here, but it looks like ass anyway. So what's the point? Um, all right, cool. Uh, Morton Upshot says one ninety nine is the thirteen dollar cam. You know, I'm not sure. Uh, let me go to Amazon real quick and take a look. 199C camera, will that find it? Nope. LDARC. A, hey, there it is. Yeah, $13 camera. There it is. Uh, I mean, there's three different people selling it. In theory, they're the same thing. It says right on the side of the camera, it actually has silk screened on it, uh, 199C, which is kind of cool. This is interesting. This is just a Runcam Nano 3. Huh. 22 bucks ain't a bad deal. Uh, everybody says Newbie Drone. All right, cool. Brandon's Baked Beans put the screenshots in the Discord Whoop and Toothpick channel. Thank you so much, dude. Very, very cool. Uh, teamwork up in this motherfucker. All right, so all right, here's something cool you can do if you're if you're ever gonna do this little trick and uh, give a bunch of people the footage. Um, once you post something in here, you can click it, and then there's uh, an option to open in browser. And so, if we do that, with the first one, and then. Second one, it's gonna open each one of these in a tab, and then we can very quickly bounce back and forth between the tabs to see the difference. That's why um, I try to get them like perfectly centered so that when we do this in a second, it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of a fair test. Uh, okay, so if we go full screen, we can go like this. 
So, uh, Run Cam Nano 3, 199C, Newbie Drone BI. Wow, look at the difference. Oh my God, look at the difference in here. And like up here, you can kind of almost start to read things versus just absolute blur. Um, so Newbie Drone BI 199C, Newbie Drone BI 199C. Look at the difference in detail here, um, even on here. So obviously the Newbie Drone is, is the one to go with. Um, and then this is the Caddx Ant Lite, which the Caddx Ant Lite is benefiting from less field of view. It, it looks like it's zooming in. Uh, the yellow shows up a lot nicer, which is kind of cool. And, you know, it actually it doesn't look that bad. I'm glad I did this because this looks better than the Newbie Drone BI. The Newbie Drone BI, which is right here, is super washed out. Uh, the colors are really, really weak on it. So in this particular test, the Caddx Ant Lite is actually doing really good. Uh, let's compare it to the Runcam Nano, though. Oh, interesting. Uh, so there's a, there's a massive difference. Let me put these next to each other. All right, so there's a massive difference in um, field of view. Caddx, run cam, Caddx, run cam, Caddx, run cam. Uh, the colors are way more saturated on the Caddx, but again, the, the, the Caddx has uh, adjustabilities, and, and I might have already adjusted, adjusted the saturation. Um, uh, the Caddx is going to be heavier, bigger lens, and you're going to have to print a special little thing to mount it in the Mobula 6 canopy. Uh, the Nano 3 is doing a arguably better job exposing everything. Like... Up here in the top left corner, this is very underexposed, as we can see by the, the Caddx, but the, the run cam really brightens it up. Um, that's a big difference. Like, this is this is a way more flyable image here in terms of, like, if I was going to drop down into the darkness. I'm actually really surprised at how good the Caddx Ant looks, though. Um, but... Runcam Nano 3 is still the winner. I mean, it's it's significantly lighter. It's probably almost a gram lighter. Um, and you can just fit it right in the mount. So, all right, cool. So that's like a, a weird bright light test. Uh, we need to do the looking across the room test, though. Kevin Summer says, uh, did that LDRC Nano 3 have the old lens on it? Uh, can't tell. It's a. It was actually a CAD. Uh, it was actually a CAD drawing of it. It wasn't an, an actual picture of it. You know what I mean? Oh, and it, it's still not even the old lens. You can see the little divots in the lens there on the bottom and on the left. Do they really not have a single picture of the actual thing? That's insane. That's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> The fact that you can sell stuff on Amazon without a, an actual picture of the product is not good. That is the dumb. Okay. Uh, room shot. Dark dark room. Low light room. Nano 3. Uh, 199C. Probably going to get its ass kicked again. BI. And... Caddx Ant Light. All right, so this is the Caddx Ant, and then we've got BI. All right, Runcam Nano 3 versus 199. Huge difference in... Wow, look at the shape. Wow, look, look at the shape of the, of, the, uh, of the square gate. It's a square gate now, right? Well, now it's a rectangle gate. That, that's that's insane. Look, it's got so much. Look at the field of the the width field of view. So you got these two gates. Oops, no. Nope, you got these two gates that move a ton. And now look how much more of this shelf. But you know what's interesting? Look, the the vertical field of view. Yeah, no, the vertical field of view changes quite a bit too. But it looks like there's more. 
of a change in the the wide field of view, um, the run cam nano looks way better though. The, the, this one in 199 is really struggling. Look how soft this. I mean it. It's hard to tell though because like it's so zoomed out. But I mean there's zero detail down here. Um, all right, newbie drone bi versus 199. These are very similar. They, these two might. Nah, I was going to say they might have the same lens on them, but I don't think that's true. There is enough of a difference in uh, 199 uh, newbie drone, 199 newbie drone, 199 newbie drone. Uh, there's enough of a difference in field of view where these don't have the same lens. They have a slightly different lens. Uh, 199 newbie drone, 199 newbie drone. Look at the sharpness in these hexagons here. 199 newbie drone, 199 newbie drone. Uh, much more detail in here. Now let's look down here out at the distance. One thing you got to be careful with these is sometimes the lenses are not focused properly from the factory. Also, what distance is X, Y, or Z factory um, focusing the lenses at? 5 feet, 10 feet, 50 feet? That, that's really important. Um, and there's never any info about it. 199C, BI. 199C, BI. This is obvious. The BI looks way better. Um, so 199C is taking a battering here. Now we've got Caddx Ant Light. Come on, man. What's happening? Uh, newbie Drone BI. Caddx Ant Light, Newbie Drone BI. Ant BI. I've got the up tilt. There's way more up tilt on the one, which is annoying, but... Uh, if we look at the, the detail in the little hexagons here... It looks way better on the newbie drone. The newbie drone is also way brighter of an image here, specifically on the right side there. But it's actually blown out. Like there, we've lost all detail here, whereas the Caddx Ant Light is giving us a little bit of detail, uh, which is a good thing. But then look down here, man. Like it's way dark down here in the bottom left corner and on the left. And then the, <laughs> the BI just, I mean, that's crazy. That is a crazy difference in low light performance. Um, BI for the win, in my opinion, on this one. Now we're going to compare the Caddx Ant Light to the Runcam Nano. Uh, Runcam Nano, Caddx Ant Light, Runcam Nano, Caddx Ant Light, Runcam Nano, Caddx Ant Light. You know what's interesting? There's a there's a huge difference. You can really see this gate here with the Caddx, and it, you can see it a lot less easily. With the Nano 3, that is a saturation thing. This is a, um, this is a not super set. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, contrast. Contrast is what I meant to say. Th this is like a low contrast image here. Um, and then the Ant Light has got a good amount of contrast. Again, the Ant Light has um, the remote control, so I could hook it up and drop the contrast number way down to change that. This is a little, this is a little too dark, I think. Um, Man, for me, it's still the Runcam Nano 3. I mean, the the newbie, uh, the newbie Drone BI, let's compare those two now. BI, Nano, BI, Nano, BI, Nano. Um, the BI gives it the most run for its money. I mean, look at the, the... I'm really impressed by the detail up here on the BI. And that's the Nano. It's just... It's, it's the best of them, I think. Caddx, Runcam... Newbie drone, but what that probably means is that the newbie drone bi is focused uh, closer. It has a has a closer focal distance um, than the other ones. Which I mean, if you're flying a tiny whoop, you yeah, it's not a terrible thing to have the focal distance be closer. Um, you could argue that that's exactly what you want. Um, interesting. Nah, man, it's a run cam nano. Like, look at look at the detail, like up in here, uh, and then the the newbie drone. It's just gone. It's just smooth. It's just a smooth ceiling. Now we've got some ceiling stuff, and now uh, this is the Caddx again. It's just smooth. There's zero detail up here. It's still the run cam nano three, man. The run cam nano three is is god, and it's also lighter and smaller and faster and. 
likes to pee its pants. Let's fly all three of these cameras and uh, you guys can get a feel for how they adjust the changes in light and stuff like that. We'll, we'll I'll, I'll turn the corner from where it's dark over there and I'll point them right up at the studio lights um, and we're, we'll see if there's like a drastic difference. So uh, I've got the Caddx Ant light in this little guy. Uh, I've got the Runcam Nano 3 in this. Um, LDARC, uh, 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 the 199, it's just not, it's just not doing it for me. Um, so we're going to take this one out of the fight, right? Th did anybody think that the 199 did better in any of those tests? Man, I just got it for Christmas too. Maybe it's really good outside. It could be a really good, I remember that there were, um, there was a camera. I thought it was the 231. Maybe it was the 199. Uh, but there was a camera that Rugi was like, yo, this is the, the toothpick camera. It'll never get any better than this. Um, so and, and toothpicks get flown outside. So maybe that's the deal with the 199. Maybe that's an outdoor camera. Um, it maybe needs a lot of light. But I gave it a lot of light over here in that first test. And it did horribly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know. That's That's a tough one. But. It's definitely not the best of the indoor cameras, so we don't have to worry about it for the rest of this live stream, which is great. We can focus on these three, and we'll fly two batteries, two batteries, two, uh, we'll do one, one, and one. Um, we'll, we'll constantly bounce back and forth between these things. So let me just drop this AIO and McStinky into this frame uh this is a, a weebleed crown frame with the weebleed 0702 32,500 kv screamer motors and i'm gonna need one of these regular screws for the rear and then actually i'm gonna need a bunch of these regular screws this is not the mobula 6 canopy so this is just gonna get screwed down Pretty sort of normal. All right, so there's the rear screw. Uh, let me get caught up on chat because I have had this screen in the way for a while. Uh, Kevin Sumner said, I'm going to do it. Thank you, brother. Okay. Sixus one says, uh, but which Runcam Nano 3? There are two sensor versions. I didn't know that there were two sensor versions. There are definitely two lens versions. Um, the uh, I had two of the good round lens versions, but they both broke. Uh, so yeah, this is the the newer lens version with the lens that has the little um, the little cuts in it. The the OG version, the really really good version, the lens was perfectly round. Um, this version, which I don't mind this version Com compared to the other one. Like, I think this one's totally fine to be to be really honest. Um, I was not blown away by the the OG lens version. Uh, but yeah, this is the the newer lens version. I, I was not aware that they they did uh, multiple different sensors. Do you know anything about that? Does anybody know anything about that? I didn't. Uh... I know that there is a, uh, a camera that looks very similar by Flywoo, uh, but it doesn't have the little screw holes that we need to mount it into the Mobula 6 canopy. So don't get suckered in by that and by the, the Flywoo version. It will not work. You will not be able to mount it. You'll have to find some other mounting solution or run it in. They do make a McStinky canopy for the Runcam Nano 3, so you, you could run it in there. Um, but don't do that, man. The Mobula 6 canopy is amazing. It's definitely the one that you want. Man, this... TPU canopies are always a real pain in the ass to kind of deal with. It's something I... Another thing I really love about the Mobula 6 canopy that I don't think too much about is how easy it is to deal with. It's molded plastic. It just drops right in. It's, it's just... It's just nice. It's just a nice canopy. Super strong. You can fit your uh, singularity antenna inside of it. It's a really, really, really good combination. All right, here we go. 
Stay on there, you bastard. Come on. Come on, stay on there. You gotta like push the screw through the TPU and it's just difficult. Ah, come on. Please, no. Come on, go, go in. Are you too good for your home? Nope, you're not too good for your home. Thank you for going to your home. All right, let's screw this in. Perfect, last one up in the front. And this is where we kind of run into problems with the, the Mobula 6 board. Um, the, the UFL plug for the antenna, uh, the video antenna, sits right up on the front of the board. And the, so the front, if you run any uh, flat mount, like most of these TPU mounts are kind of flat on the bottom. Um, it, uh, it makes the TPU mount kind of just sit up a little bit. And then what it's also doing is it's, you're pulling the mount and the, the whole camera mount down into the AIO, which is not good. That, that kind of, um, starts to hard mount the AIO, which is not great. Um, so yeah, that's kind of annoying, but I've done it before and it, and it hasn't caused problems. Um, so look right up in here. Look at the UFL. See how that UFL is pushing there? You can really see it. You can see it literally pushing up on the TPU. That's not good. And it kind of does it on one side more than the other. So it, it cocks the camera over ever so slightly. Um, not so much that like I fly like shit. If you've ever flown uh, with a camera that's like drastically off... Um, you fly terrible because you put the horizon level, but then the quad's not level. So it's always like sliding to the side. And it's very confusing. It's really, really, really hard to fly a rig like that. Um, and what's funny is like you won't notice it. Uh, you got to find every once in a while, find something when you're flying, find something flat and just look that you know is flat Um and then just look right at it and make sure that your your quad is not sliding to the side. Um, if it is, your camera is not level. Um, that's a real thing with tiny whoops. It's it's easy to mount a tiny whoop camera in a way that is not perfectly level. Uh, it's one of the huge problems with the carbon fiber frames um, is they just don't mount the cameras in a way that they sit perfectly flat. Battery, USB plug, Beta Flight, Battlestar Galactica, Beats, Bears, Battlestar Galactica. Uh, Sixus One said, "Is uh, is that light blowing it out?" It is indeed. Sixus One also says, uh, "We got that." Uh, I find that ant light makes everything red. It hates sunset. That's interesting. Um, Wonder why. I mean, red is the most difficult color for cameras to reproduce. That's just that's just a scientific fact. Motor one is backwards. Motor two is correct. Motor three is backwards. Motor four is correct. One and three. Motor one is now correct. Motor three is now correct. Stop motors. Close. I understand the risks. Make sure they're all making thrust. They are indeed. Uh, OSD, come on, and uh, R for RPM. Uh, shit, what do they call it? Sick overlay, RTC, RC channels. Wait, no, hold on, I can unplug the battery. There we go. Uh, where's the RPM on here? Uh, ESC RPM frequency. There it is. Oh, wait, no, no, no. ESC RPM. Frequency. RPM frequency. Let's just go with RPM. Why is it not? There it is. All right, we're going to move this over. Oh, that's busy. That is busy, busy, busy. That's okay. Save it. 
And that should be interesting. These are 32,500 kV motors. Uh, let's put an absolutely fresh battery on here and fire all four motors up because that's what I'm going to have to do in the air, right? Uh, let's fire all four motors up in the motors tab and see what RPM they get to. And then we'll take a look in the air. So you're looking right up here at this R number. Ready? Oh, shit. Hopefully you guys can see that. Ready? <laughs> Looked like 56,000 across the board. Uh, if somebody can rewind and pause it to kind of confirm that, I would love that. But I'm pretty sure I saw 56,000 on all four. All right. So let's first put this up in the air on this semi-dead battery. Um, and I'm just super curious as to what the um, what the RPM numbers are going to get up to. So here we go. And battery, just real quick. I got to fly this battery the rest of the way down anyway. Uh, Jake FPV says, what do you think of the Foxier Razor Pico? Um, I do not like it. I had that camera on the cinematic, uh, drift car chasing rig and I did not like it at all. Uh, it was very, very, very dark and very muddy. Um, I believe that's the camera that I had on that rig. Um, when I filmed the, uh, the analog uh, RC drift car edit. Uh, so yeah, if you go to my channel and look at the, uh, RC drifting edit with the analog camera, that's the, uh, Razor Pico. It was, it was bad, man. I didn't realize it was so bad. Uh, uh, uh. Kevin Summer says, I wonder if the ant light is center weighting more heavily than others. That's an interesting thought. It's a super interesting thought. Uh, center weighting is the metering. Um, it will give more priority to what it sees in the center of the frame, which is usually good, uh, but not always. Look at those RPM numbers floating around. Uh, 3.9. Here we go. Trying to get those RPM numbers up. <laughs> I So I can't, I have no hope of seeing those RP... <sighs> you fucking asshole. You. Oh my God. The RPM numbers work in turtle mode. That's hysterical. I cannot fucking believe that four seconds in, I crashed the goddamn thing on the railing. Oh, good. Yeah, flip upside down. That's nice. Thanks for that. Jackass. All right, here we go. Oh, my God. The, the fisheye of this lens is brutal. All right, hold on. Let's see if I can get all the RPMs up. That is as long as I can possibly hold the full hold full throttle. Um, whoa! Oh God damn it! Yeah, that's the the most amount of time I can hold full throttle. What kind of RPM are you guys seeing? Drop it in the chat. Wow, this is hard to fly with this wide wide field of view. <laughs> I'm so used to the um, to the run cam. Ah! Let's do a little flying here. Oh my god! Yeah, okay. My ability to judge things is completely out the window. This battery's dead, though. Okay. So, what'd you guys see? What'd you guys see? Come on. Who saw a number? Uh... Brad Munden says, how long does it take to get a newbie drone order? Usually it's like three days. Depends on where you are in the country, though. Uh, 661 says, a lot of versions of the Runcam 93, old wide lens, new narrow lens, no holes version. Holes uh, came back, but wires on top version. Newest has wires on the bottom, a new, a new sensor. Wow, I didn't know that. 
Strange thing is my older Fat Shark Dom V2s, uh, I like the older sensor, hated the new sensor, but on my HDO 2s, I hate the older sensor. <laughs> That's funny. Um, 661 says, also, have you heard Weebleed was handing out 0702 40,000 KV motors at Whooptopia, not yet released. Um, I did know that that motor was coming. I, I couldn't say anything, but uh, that's wild that those now exist. Holy Christ. Um, <laughs> Morton Upshot says, hope that looked better in your goggles than it did on screen. Um, uh, oh, that's cool. Sixus One says, there's a post-flight statistic element that says max ESC RPM. Could you guys not see anything when I was upstairs? Um, was that what's going on? Could you not read those numbers? That's super. If that's the case, that's super annoying. What the hell? What's that about? Uh, okay. So that was the newbie drone BI. Now we're going to go to the, uh, let's go to the Caddx Ant Light on the carbon fiber rig. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes the most sense. Up next. Uh, we're not going to get those RPM readings, but that's okay. We're, we're evaluating cameras here. Here comes the Caddx Ant Light. Uh, I have adjusted these settings to be as good as I can possibly get them. I'm glad that we did this because I was really kind of hating on this Caddx Ant Light, but now I'm realizing that it's not that bad. Not that good either, but Low battery. Low yeah, battery. as long as it's not that bad. <laughs> All right, here we go. Caddx Ant Light. Sixus One said it was really dark. OSD was good. Image was sketchy, fading in and out. Um, unluckiest number says that he saw fifty-one thousand. Okay. Um, I mean the battery was kind of going dead. We'll we'll do it again. Here we go. Caddx Ant Light. <laughs> My God, this. This rig is so... I have the Throttle Expo. So, oh my god, it's dark. Whoa! That was such a slow transition. Here, hold on. This thing is so easy to fly smooth. I have so much Throttle Expo in here. Ready? Dark to light. That wasn't that bad there. It was going into the darkness. Going from the stairs into the dark. We'll do it again. Low wow. And so when it when it adjusts to the dark room up here, it really washes the con it really uh, lowers the contrast. This thing just flies like a cinewoop. I mean it makes sense. The the carbon fiber is blocking a lot of the thrust. Um yeah, I mean, this is on 32,500 kV motors, and, like, look at, look at this. Ready? Like, it, it, it flies like it has 26,000 kV motors on it because the, uh, because the carbon fiber frame is blocking so much of the thrust, and it's just heavier. It's just a heavier build. Oh, God, stop freestyling it, you idiot. It doesn't do freestyle well. All it does is hurt motors when you fly it freestyling. <laughs> I could just like limp it around now. The throttle expo is just delicious on here though. My god! I think I have like 50 throttle expo added in. I can fight like like look at me moving the throttle. Look at the throttle value on the right there, 41, 43, 44. Watch this. Look at the elevation barely change. And look how much I'm moving the throttle up and down. That, my friends, is Throttle Expo right there. I have so much control. It's so soft. I can just move the throttle slowly up and down and just, like, really adjust my elevation super fine. Like, fly really low to the ground here. Also, the camera is, is nice and low to the ground. Oh, no, no! Get out of there. Get out of there. Look at that, man. This thing. Low 
But yeah, no no for freestyle. It's a no for me on freestyle. Um, uh, I, I forgot about the camera. I was I was just kind of flying. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think about the camera? What do you guys think about the Caddx Ant Light just now? Uh, not impressed when when I went upstairs. That was uh, shocking. But now we're gonna go run Cam Nano three. Good old reliable run cam nano three. Let's see how it is. Um six six one, how can you tell the difference between um the uh run cam nanos? Out of curiosity. Stop telling me you have a low battery. I get it. Get it. You're gonna be fine. Oh god. Wow, I'm like used to flying those other <laughs> Jeez, okay, easy, come on, can't you just not fucking do that? Let's see how that light transition is with this. It's like instant! And and you see, it's not like, it's not completely killing all of the uh, uh, contrast. It's not going like crazy low contrast! I'm trying to not crash because everybody's trying to sleep. God damn, this flies so good every time. Oh, hey. Hey. Oh, I was so close. Shit. Oh, God, no. Hey. Ah! Got through the first one, but the second one got me. Um, yeah, Run Cam Nano, it just looks right to me. It, it just... It's just, like, the all-rounder, you know? Like, colors are not super saturated. They're also not super washed out. They're, they're like, it's just, it looks natural. There's not, like, any weird fish eye, right? Like, straight lines look straight. Like, look, look at, you know, this... Three by three, it looks like it's filled with straight lines, right? Like if I get closer, it'll pin cushion a little bit, right? See like on the sides versus the top. But like any of these cameras are gonna are gonna do that. Why can't I get through that goddamn gate? Ah, oh, I can get through those blindly sideways. Yeah! Oh boy, I almost hit myself in the head. Ow! Oh. Ow, you jerk. I put Christmas lights under the desk since I fly under the desk a lot. Look at that. Wee! Wee! And I put propellers on them. Oh god. Look at that. Can't even see it. It just looks like a big clusterfuck of wires. I need to figure out a better little wiring management uh, setup with that. See, here's what I will say about the Runcam Nano 3. There are moments where it gets blown out. Look how blown out my area is. That's not very fair, though. Where where this thing is hovering right now, there's, like, no light. These, these three lights are on, but they're just red and purple LEDs, so they're not all that bright. These three lights are on, but again, red and purple LEDs. It is dark on this side of the room. It is bright as balls over on this side of the room because I've got these two gigantic studio lights just hammering away. Um, and the rest of these lights. Uh, but I do notice that sometimes when I'm flying down here, I'm like, fuck, I can't see anything. Oh, this battery's gonna be dead to shit. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect camera. But, uh, damn good. I think it's the best. Back to the newbie drone BI. Back to the matter at hand. Come on, get in there. There we go. And, all right. Going back wide field of view. There we go. See if that does the same thing. 
See, look, it's not as blown out. Like, there's still some detail over there. That's kind of cool. I don't hate that. So, wide field of view. Whoa, God, yeah, see, I just don't... Uh, I'm just... Shit. I've flown way too many batteries on the Runcam Nanos. Oh, I tried to back it through there. That would have been sick. I don't hate this, though. And, I mean, like, the wide field of view makes it look like you're going faster than you actually are, which is kind of cool. Oh, God. What the hell? Okay. Yeah. Judging things when you change field of views becomes very difficult, man. I'm, yeah, I'm just, like, center punching stuff. Hey! Oh, oh, this ain't gonna go well. Get out of there. Yay! Oh my god. Oh my god! Ah! I didn't need to disarm! Yay! Oh! Pulled that one out of my ass. I had to make a little correction in the air. Uh oh. What you doing, little buddy? Um. BI yeah, looks good, man. I, it, it, this is a. I mean, a lot of racers like this camera, and and I totally get it. I really do. Uh. This is also more up tilt than I'm used to, so there's another good excuse. Good racer excuse. This battery's done. Interesting. Interesting. I don't hate it, man. I, I do not hate the newbie drone BI. There's nothing to hate on about it. It's a good one. It's a good one for sure. Uh, I don't think I like it as much as the Run Cam Nano, though. We're going to go right back to the Run Cam Nano, and then we're going to finish up with the Caddx. Uh, I, I like the Caddx the least, so um, yeah. Let's bounce back and forth here. Here we go! Back to the Run Cam Nano. And now look, when I do this again... Oh, no, okay. There is actually more detail on this. I was wrong. Although, as I move backwards, it gets worse. So, I don't know. Maybe it's pretty much the same. What the hell's going on? Oh, this is a fucked up battery, isn't it? <coughs> Maybe not. Doing a weird, uh, the VTX is just going on this AIO. Whoa! Oh! What is that? Where am I? Oh, I'm on the drum set. Oh, come on. Come on, dick. Come on. Stop it! Come on! Stop it! Stop! Stop! Come on! Let me... Hey. No, no, no! Ah! Hey, we got it. Oh, fuck. Uh, which one do you guys think is better? This is not... Uh, you have to let my... Lack of flying skills go. The... The newbie drone is gonna be... I'm gonna fly way worse. Not because of the camera, because I'm not used to it. Although I'm flying pretty bad full stop right now. That's not good. Uh, yeah, which one do you guys think is better? I still think it's the Run Cam Nano. But the problem is, like, I've I've flown the shit out of the Run Cam Nano. Anybody think the newbie drone looks better? Fuck. No! Get out of there. Oh, you scumbag. What the hell? What did I do that for? No. Oh, that's that was a save. I'll give myself a little bit of credit for that save. 
Ah, it was all going so well. What the fuck was that? Oh, oh man, crash prevention. Getting the job done there. Oh, look, shiny lights. Let's smash into them. Stop it. Stop it! I hate you! Get out of there! What? What even was that? There was nothing there. Obviously, there was something there. Oh, shit. Oh, I like that. Oh my god. I almost got that. Get out of here. Stop it. Leave me alone. Oh, bong. <laughs> hey, come on. Come on. Oh my god, that was just... I don't know what the hell that was. Why am I hitting everything all of a sudden? Run Cam Nano for me, man. Uh, anybody else? Everybody's sleeping, CID screaming. Uh, my screaming, I have checked in with the family so many times on my screaming. They, they, they can't hear shit. It is... Uh, I can hear everything upstairs from like a walking standpoint. But, like, I can't hear anybody's voices up there, and yeah, they, they've never, ever, ever been able to hear me, even on my most excited nights. Um, so, yeah, Caddix uh, Ant Light, last of our six batteries for the night. Look how shit this looks. Does it really look shit, or am I just being mean? Oh, it looks like shit, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, the reds look awful. You're right. Whoever was saying that about the reds, oh, my God, they look like shit. It's better when I get closer, but watch that. Look at that. The red goes, like, dark and black and, like, ooh, yo. Is this more of an outdoor camera? What's the deal with this? Come on. There's got to be some something I'm missing here. Oh God, no! Ooh, cut that one close. My God, this thing flies just like my Cinewhoops. Oh, and that light transition is just awful. It, in, in fairness, it is really dark up here. It is really, really, really dark up here. Um, we don't have any lights on. The only lights are uh, this umbrella up here, which is just LED lights. Um, this really cool Aurora Borealis looking thing, but it's it's shining up on the ceiling. Um, and then this under cabinet LED light here with a little bit of um, these uh, string lights. So it is genuinely dark up here. But the other cameras did not struggle nearly this bad. And that that light, that dark to light transition was nasty. Oh, stop it. Just trying to turn the OSD on, so I took my uh, pointer finger off the uh, off the left thumbstick. Oh my god, why? Maybe it's not that bad. I guess I should maybe put one... I, I guess I should maybe rewire one and put it into a McStinky and put it on a rig. A freestyle rig. Although I don't know. I mean, I'm pointing this. I'm pointing this at the same stuff. Yeah. 
Easy. Oh, God, that came out of nowhere. I need to stop crashing this rig. Jesus. You jerk. You jerk. Let me out of there. Let me out of there, you bastard. There it is. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, I, 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 I've, I've, I've lost. I've lost track. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know which one's which. Um, I have the run cam nanos in everything though, so I'm keeping them. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I, I i i truly don't know uh i'm gonna stick with i i think and, and this is kind of where i was at before um i think where i keep landing is they all look like shit <laughs> um so just don't even worry about it like if you buy a rig that has one of these cameras on it just leave it and just fly it um i hate that i hate that uh, answer. I, I always really try to actually figure out which ones looks better, which one looks better, but uh, or flies better or whatever. But I don't know. I just I I don't see uh, enough of a difference between these to really say like, hey, this one's this one's hands down the winner. I don't even see like significant differences at all. Like they just they all. I don't know. On the still tests, I think it's really obvious, but then as soon as you start flying around, I don't really, uh, I don't really see enough of a difference. Here's what it is. I don't see enough of a difference to care. The Runcam Nano 3 is the lightest weight, and that really, that, that matters. That really does matter. Um, so, yeah. That's sort of where I'm at. I, you know what I could do? I know what I can do. I know what I can do to figure this out. Um, I can set three rigs up with different cameras and go to the RC Drift's place and do like two batteries each with the different cameras and then chop them up and, and um, do a quick like one to the next to the next. And I could even probably chase the same car like like. Uh, I've made a couple friends there, um, and so like when I'm doing the little test, I just chase that one blue and white A90 Supra, um, and that way, subject is the same color, driver is the same skill level. Um, yeah, I might do that. I might do that because I've already got this with the BI um, Runcam Nano, uh, Runcam Nano Four, of course. Uh, Caddx Ant Light in here, and then, I mean, they're the three, right? Like, the 199 didn't look that great. Uh, the Razor, the Pico Razor, I really did not like. Uh, all right, let me get caught up on chat, and then we're going to shut this down. Uh, uh, Morton Upshot says... Don't like the black wall that greets you at the door on the Caddx. The black wall that greets you at the door. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. When I turn the corner at the top of the stairs. Yeah, right, 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 right. Uh, 661 says, maybe if I'm not lazy, I can find out how to post some pics of the old and new RC3 images. That would be awesome. Uh, in Discord, you just drag them and drop them. Uh, max RPM and post flight screen is around 50k RPM just flying around the room. You can see it every time you discard, uh, discard, uh, discord, dis, oh, fuck it. disarm. There we go. Unluckiest number says, uh, make sure you type FPV after Ciati. Um, I like the BI because I'm stuck with it until it breaks. I want the Mobulus 6 canopy, uh, when I get the money and we'll save, uh, the run cam for it. Fits right. Yep. 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 You got it. And then Kevin, uh, with the reminder. Thanks, friends. I'm exhausted. I'm I'm uh, I'm gonna get something to eat and go to sleep. I'm also hungry as hell. Cause that's my life. Thanks for hanging. Uh, I hope you learned something. 
I doubt it. You never know, though. So. I mean, hey, you know, sometimes you got to retest shit. I, I, I really uh, take a lot of comfort in retesting stuff. Um, it's uh, it's it's important. I really do think it's important to to retest things. What do you think of that? Did you hear that? That's what I think of Caddx. That's not true. I love Caddx. Uh, they make the walk snail system, and that shit's dope. Ah, I'm gonna actually watch the rest of uh, Ian's review on the Caddx Moonlight 4K. Be good, my friends. I'll see you on Wednesday. Whoop Wednesday. We'll do something fun. I'm not sure what yet, but it'll be fun. Cool. See you then. Here comes some more flying from 2019. Good God, man. How time flies. Purple Beach. Let's see if this song's any good. Oh, this is a good one. I can tell. Be good, friends. Love you. Bye. Thank you.